Hello and welcome to National Focus. I am Alicia Burton. In the headlines, New Australian High Commissioner presents credentials to Dominica. China visit to generate economic growth opportunities for Dominica. And Prime Minister Skerritt commends Addison James on stellar performance at 2024 Carifta Games. The details of the headline stories and more when we return. Ride safe, wear a helmet, safer roads in the nature aisle. This message was brought to you by the government of the Commonwealth of Dominica. Welcome back. Dominica has welcomed a new High Commissioner from Australia. This has Her Excellency Sonia Kopp presented her credentials to President of Dominica, Her Excellency Sylvani Burton, during a small ceremony at the State House on Friday. Her Excellency Burton says Dominica appreciates the contributions of Australia over the years in encouraging sustainable development in countries like Dominica. The government and people of Dominica appreciate the significant contributions which your country has made and continue to make through its assistance programs and partnerships with other organizations that seek to alleviate poverty and encourage sustainable development in developing countries. Such assistance facilities include the Australia Legal Resource International, the Direct Aid Program, the United Nations Population Fund, the International Organization for Migration, the Australian Volunteer Program, and the offer of Commonwealth scholarships to pursue graduate studies at universities in Australia. Please convey our deepest thanks to the government and people of Australia for the support throughout the years. She says Australia's commitment to combating climate change is important for countries like Dominica who are vulnerable to the impact of the global issue. Worthy of noting, is the decision taken by Australia at COP28 to strengthen its climate finance commitment and rejoin the Green Climate Fund with a contribution of 50 million Australian dollars to support those most vulnerable to the urgent threat posed by climate crisis. Your Excellency, as small island developing states, Dominica and the rest of the Caribbean are particularly vulnerable to natural disasters due to climate change phenomena, and we welcome the focus of Australia in assisting small island developing states in developing their resilience to climate change and natural disasters. Her Excellency Burton says she looks forward to the continued assistance of Australia to Dominica and the wider region as they all continue to combat major global challenges. Your Excellency, we therefore look forward to the growing presence of Australia in the Caribbean region and to further strengthening of relationships both bilaterally and multilaterally in dealing with the challenges confronting small island developing states and coastal states and more particularly the devastating effect of climate change, rising incidents of crime and violence, threats to global security, degradation of our ecosystem and loss of biodiversity, poverty, inequality, and the growing challenge of chronic non-communicable diseases, all of which threaten our sustainable growth and development and peaceful way of life. Her Excellency Sonia Kopp says the relationship between the two countries is important as they work together to combat mutual issues. Australia values the relationship between our two countries 
including our close cooperation as we share strong mutual interests in working together to respond to global challenges, including combating climate change, advancing human rights and promoting international security. Australia is very pleased to be supporting Dominica to achieve its sustainable development goals through Australia's direct aid program. Since 2005, Australia has funded approximately 52 community-led development projects in Dominica, valued at over 900,000 Australian dollars. Australia was also pleased to have been able to support Dominica's recovery in the wake of Hurricane Maria in 2017 by committing 1.5 million Australian dollars in support via the United Nations Population Fund and International Organisation for Migration to construct core housing for vulnerable families in Dominica. We look forward to partnering with other organisations in the future to continue to deliver development outcomes for communities in Dominica. Prime Minister Honourable Roosevelt Carrot has provided a comprehensive report on his recent visit to China in celebration of two decades of diplomatic relations between the two countries. Alia Martin reports. A number of agreements were signed during Prime Minister Honourable Roosevelt Carrot's recent visit, commemorating the 20th anniversary of diplomatic relations between the Commonwealth of Dominica and the People's Republic of China. These agreements aim to further strengthen the already strong bilateral relations between the two countries and promote cooperation in various fields such as trade, education and culture. The government minister's visit in China signed 10 agreements and memoranda of understanding with the government of the People's Republic of China. For one, phase nine of the agricultural technical cooperation project. We just concluded phase eight. We're moving to phase nine additional funding being made available to advance the technical cooperation between Dominica and China. So that's very welcome news for the farmers and the agricultural sector in Dominica. Two, the construction of the Colio River Wall, um, home repairs and construction of modern toilets to um, come full circle with the elimination of pit latrines in Dominica. We still have a few left in Dominica and we shall eliminate this um, hopefully uh, before the middle of 2025. Uh, three handover certificates for the agricultural science complex building uh, in One Mile Portsmouth. Four economic and technical cooperation between the government of the People's Republic of China and the government of Dominica. Five cooperation plan between our two governments on jointly promoting the Belt and Road Initiative. Six strengthening development cooperation and promotion of the implementation of the Global Development Initiative. Seven, consideration on green and low carbon development between the National Development and Reform Commission of the People's Republic of China and the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Dominica. Eight, exchange and cooperation in the field of economic development between the National Development and Reform Commission and the Ministry of Finance of Dominica. Nine, news cooperation between Xinhua News Agency of China and the Government Information Service of Dominica. And 10, an MOU between China Media Group and the Government Information Services, Service of Dominica. Dominica will continue to collaborate with the People's Republic of China on significant projects aimed at improving the well-being of its citizens and contributing to economic development. These include, among others, the, the road from a new airport, that's an international airport, to Portsmouth. Um, as you can well imagine, that road project is a substantial cost. Um, just imagine from Lube to Bacatel is $171 million. Um, so you can do the maths with 20 bridges to be constructed from the new international airport to Portsmouth. We have also received confirmation uh, that assistance will be provided to construct a cultural center for Dominica. And this will include um, space for performing arts and um, uh, other entertainment aspects, in, including um, a, a fit for purpose or built for purpose or designed for purpose um, theater, a movie theater. More commitments have been made from the recent visit to China, with over $27 million pledged for interventions aimed at supporting the budget and various government initiatives. I intend to assign part of that, of that money uh, to commence the, the future housing program 
um, in um, Warner to address issues of housing among the new middle class of young professionals in Dominica. We also made uh, presentations for assistance to construct a new cruise and cargo port, and we will follow up on these with the necessary submissions. The main highlight of Prime Minister Skerritt's visit was the meeting with President Xi Jinping of China on March 25, 2024, during which the two countries reaffirmed their commitment to maintaining friendly ties. President Xi and I agreed that our relations are a firm example of successful collaboration and a model for mutual respect between developing countries. China is a true friend of Dominica, and President Xi reassured me of his government's intent to maintain and strengthen ties and explore further cooperation in areas of economy, education, health, and infrastructure. As you would have heard from news reports, President Xi expressed appreciation for Dominica's steadfast friendship and said he was willing to work with us to develop fresh strategies to increase cooperation and deliver sustained benefits to our peoples. I welcome these expressions of friendship and cooperation and pledge Dominica's commitment to fostering an even deeper alliance with China and expanding our economic links in new areas such as tourism, e-commerce, and renewable energy. The visit further provided the opportunity for Minister of Finance, Honorable Dr. Irvin McIntyre, and Minister for Tourism, Honorable Denise Charles Pemberton, to make presentations to several business leaders and investors, outlining opportunities in tourism, agriculture, renewable energy, and e-commerce. There is a high interest in exploring business and investment opportunities here, and we will pursue these aggressively in efforts to open new gateways to economic growth. During the Boa Forum for Asia, Prime Minister Skerritt urged world leaders to come together in the face of the significant challenges present in today's world. He emphasized the importance of collaborating to address these common challenges and create a prosperous future. The visit culminated in Shanghai, China, where Prime Minister Skerritt met with the Vice Mayor to discuss possible collaborations between Dominica and Shanghai, specifically in business and industry. Prime Minister Skerritt concluded his comprehensive report on his official visit to China by expressing gratitude to the hosts for their exceptional reception. We have every intention to follow up on these valuable links established during my official visit to China. Once again, I extend thanks to a host, including the Ambassador of the Commonwealth of Dominica to China, His Excellency Martin Charles, who I believe um, did an exceptional job in preparing for this official visit uh, um, to China. And to Dominican students uh, for their hard work and showcase of Dominica's culture to a Chinese audience. And I was very much impressed um, with the, the high level of professionalism and commitment to a country uh, displayed by the students. So some of them who have completed and some of them who are still studying um, in China. It, 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 it really touched um, my sensibilities uh, in, in terms of their own um, maturity and professionalism. The recent visit of Prime Minister Skerritt and his delegation to China has further solidified the friendship and cooperation between the Commonwealth of Dominica and the People's Republic of China and is expected to bring about new opportunities for both countries in the years to come. Alia Martin for the Government Information Service. Thank you, Alia, for that report. Prime Minister Skerritt has commended Dominican athlete Addison James on a stellar performance at the 51st edition of the Karifta Games. Four athletes, namely Addison James, Carol Etienne, Kamichael Tate and Neon Davis participated in the 2024 Games held over the Easter weekend. James overcame his rank as number six to throw a personal best of 65.5 meters at the Kirani James Athletic Stadium in Grenada, earning him the bronze medal in the male under 20 javelin event. Let me also take this opportunity to congratulate young Addison James of Marigot uh, for copying the bronze medal in the under 20 in the under 20 boys javelin at the just concluded character games held 
in Grenada. I commend Addison for his exemplary work ethic and wish him continued success in his athletics career. Prime Minister Skerritt also extended congratulations to the rest of the team on their accomplishments. Uh, commendations also to the entire team which represented Dominica at the character games, uh, including the coaching staff and reporter Kalai John Baptist who traveled with the team and, and, and kept us informed um, um, sprint by sprint. You know? um, so I want to recognize the efforts. All four of Dominica's athletes delivered exceptional performances which allowed them to qualify and compete in the finals of their respective disciplines. This reflects well on the caliber of the athletes and the potential of track and field in Dominica. You're watching National Focus. More when we return. I love the freedom when I'm out there. Simply put, the war is from shore. None of that out there. And it's my daily bread. I learned it from my dad. My dad is one of the senior guys here who catch the biggest fish around here. And he's top with the red snappers. It's a family thing. I'm the only one fishing right now in the family. Just keeping it going. I enjoy bringing them up, man. <laughs> Sometimes you have a yellowfin tuna, 400 pounds. Man, let me tell you, that's just a joy out there. I enjoy going out there and just holding the big fish. I don't lift weights, I lift fish. The morning of my fishing trip, I would get up, make a little spice tea. Then I come down here, I have my GPS, which most fishermen are supposed to have that. Normally I prepare the day before, because whenever you go out there, you must have ice. Ice is a must for preservation of the fish. So I always make sure I have everything the day before. My fish represents me, and I bring good quality fish ashore simply because the restaurants themselves, they have to show a quality product. Tourism and agriculture go hand in hand, that's what I think. We're all connected, it's, it's like a big machine, and I'm just so proud to be a part of it. My name is Brandon Carlyle, and tourism is my business. Welcome back. Moving forward, the government of Dominica hopes to partner with the Dominica Olympic Committee and Dominica Amateur Athletics Association to advance the development and construction of a synthetic athletics track for Dominica. Prime Minister Skerritt initially announced plans to build a synthetic track in Point Round of Portsmouth in February 2023. However, following the recently held 2024 Carifta Games, the synthetic athletics track has been identified as a much needed facility to further enhance the growth of athletics in Dominica. The track um, is certainly um, crucial um, for, for Dominica. Um, it is a matter that, 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 as a matter of fact, the South Sea have been a meeting this morning, um, it, it postponed later on. Uh, so we are advancing this, this, this track. This is another priority for the government. Um, we have identified, as you know, the, the location uh, for this track um, based on the soil testing there. Uh, that's in, in, in um, Point Rang, and we, we have to move with the final acquisition processes um, for, for this track. Collective action and collaboration will ensure the highly anticipated synthetic track and field project comes to fruition. International Athletic Association has given some commitment to the DOC here and to the Dominica Athletic Association for some limited funding that will go towards this track. So we, we're looking to partner with the DOC and um, the Athletic Association through Mr. Brendan Williams will be leading the process with, along with the president of the DOC um, on this matter. So I'm, 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 I'm very confident that um, very soon one will see some movements physical movements where this track is concerned. Because this is the, in our view, this is the only missing, or one of the few missing points where sport is concerned in terms of the government's investments um, in, in sports in Dominica. Prime Minister Skerritt conceded that exposure and use of the synthetic athletics track would benefit Dominica's athletes. So we look forward to, to, the, to, the, to, to completing and, get, and coming full circle with, with um, our investments in, in, in sports in Dominica. Uh, but I agree with you entirely that, that having a synthetic track, having our, our children, our athletes exposed to, to, to these facilities will place them in a better position uh, to be able to compete um, globally. Because um, we do have the raw talent, we do have the, the capacity. I think the, the, the next push is really to provide them with, with, with that facility uh, and we hope that they can make use of this facility 
um, to really get them to, to the next level. The government of Dominica remains committed to investing in sports development in Dominica. Parliamentary representative for the Petit Savan constituency, Honorable Julian Defoe, says ongoing upkeep of the Petit Savan Road is expected to complement the re-establishment of the community's link to Dalis. In spite of the relocation of Petit Savan residents to the Bellevue settlement, they have remained dedicated to working under the National Employment Programme towards the upkeep of the roads. As you would have known, um, the Petit Savan people were, located, were relocated um, post-disaster tropical storm Erica, um, which occurred in 2015. However, in, 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 by 2019, as you know, through the Citizenship by Investment program, new homes or housing units 453 to be exact were constructed where many of these residents were located. That being said, of course, some residents chose to remain in Petit Savan, but of course the government itself had a commitment to the Petit Savan people, even though they had relocated that it would maintain Petit Savan. Uh, so those who depend on the area and agriculture for their livelihood, as you know, um, provisions and, and bailiff, which is the main industry, can return there. The parliamentary representative is appreciative of those employed under the NEP who are involved in efforts to maintain the roads. And I'm happy that you have seen on your trip to Petit Savan that you have seen even from Bagatel all the way to Petit Savan is well maintained. But not only that, the community of Petit Savan itself is very well maintained. And, and I have to give a heartfelt thank you to the very good working um, team which is there cleanup and beautification under the, under the National Employment Program doing an awesome and wonderful job. And of course to the crew from Bagatel who also um, does from Bagatel all the way to the top where we call Man Mike Claire and then you descend into Tupid Savan. So both groups are doing a tremendous job in maintaining the area. In addition to that, through government's commitment, a three-man crew was added to focus solely on road maintenance in Petit Savan. They may not do large expanse of road at a time, but we're trying to block one hole at a time until we get to Petit Savan. And you would have seen a, a, a tremendous difference in the driving experience um, to Petit Savan. So all of these efforts are geared towards the ultimate project, which is reinstatement of the connection um, to Delicis um, through Petit Savan. And as you will see, as has um, noted in a statement yesterday, that mobilization will come soon and, and government will fulfill its commitment to the people of, of Dominica and especially the people of Petit Savan and Delicis. Former member of parliament, Mr. Venus, John Charles, has been laid to rest with an official funeral on Thursday. The funeral was held at the St. Joseph Roman Catholic Church and was attended by President of Dominica, Her Excellency Sylvani Burton, former President, His Excellency Charles Savre, Prime Minister, Honorable Roosevelt Skerritt, Speaker of the House of Assembly, Honorable Joseph Isaac, and other members of Cabinet. Venus John Charles is from the village of St. Joseph on the west coast of Dominica. He started his working life as a school teacher, then switched to farming and became a prominent citrus and banana farmer. He also served on numerous boards. Mr. John Charles was awarded the Cicero Award of Honor in November 2008. Thomas Red realized early, very early that he could make an impact by serving his community. Through politically, I was a member of the Dominican United Workers Party, the UPP, a founding member of the Dominican Freedom Party, and eventually joined the Dominican Labor Party. Van was hardworking, fun loving, thoughtful, compassionate, articulate, and well read. He was loyal to a fault and was always available to assist someone in need, be it financial or advice. Main celebrant Monsignor Eustace Thomas says Mr. John Charles's contribution to nation building should serve as an example to all. What contribution have we made? to our country, our church, our community, to deserve entering heaven? Have we ende endeavored to focus on development or destruction? Are we lovers of our country or haters? Do we in time of need give hope to our citizens or to do or do we all do what we can to deprive us of attaining success? Part of the eulogy presents Valus as someone who was a good citizen, a genuine politician, and someone 
who manifested communal solicitude. And that's all for this edition of National Focus. Be sure to follow GIS Dominica on Facebook, YouTube and on Twitter. You can also drop us an email at gis at dominica.gov.dm. From all of us here on the GIS News production team, I am Adisa Burton. Thank you for watching and have a good evening.